So th I'm going to be presenting the Teaching and Learning Awards, uh, and the awards celebrate quality le learning experiences created for learners of any age and ability that use the library's digital content. Um, we're going to highlight five entries from, from this category. Um, ah, forgot about this slide. Um, this is just harking back um, to previous winners. So um, that first one um, in 2016 was Library Carpentry, which was a set of tutorials developed for librarians uh, using our data and also teaching them how to code. In 2017, Victoria's World of Stories was a collaboration with Victoria Primary School and the parents, uh, uh, children and teachers to create a storybook illustrated by some of our images. And last year's winner, Pocket Miscellany's Jonah Komen from Glasgow School of Art, who made these delightful um, medieval manuscript-based zines, um, which were, uh, which especially focused on sort of disenfranchised communities. So first of all, our first entry uh, for the Learning and Teaching Awards is the Atlas of Endangered Alphabets by Tim Brooks. Uh, Tim has been working on this project since 2010, in which he created an online interactive atlas of the world's threatened indigenous and minority writing systems. Uh, he's also taken as inspiration an invention from the British Library's Heritage Made Digital team, the alphabetical Sudoku, Sudoku, sorry, and extending it to create Sudoku puzzles in a wide variety of endangered writing and number systems. These will be added later at, at some later date. The next project is a collaboration uh, with the Royal College of Art and the British Library called The Other Voice. Um, uh, postgraduate elective at the Royal College of Art. Uh, a group of students were immersed in life story recordings from the British Library's collections, and they developed creative uses and responses for an exhibition using sound, textile, and holographic art, film, soundscapes, virtual reality, and 3D installations. Uh, the next project, entitled Travel Literature, a data-oriented journey through the British Library's 18th and 19th century books, um, by uh, University College London, uh, the BA and BSc Arts and Sciences um, degree. Uh, this project sets about getting a group of undergraduates, undergraduate students to produce a data set for, of around 3,000 travel literature items extracted from 50,000 books from the 19th century. Uh, the work included cleaning and reformatting the original data and supplying additional metadata to enrich the final curated data set. Uh, this was created as part of an undergraduate arts and sciences degree at UCL in, and particularly focusing on the information through the ages module taught by Sarah Wingate Gray. Uh, the next project is Reclaiming the Library Desk in, in the Digital Age with Augmented Reality by Anrik Bregman. Uh, this is a prototype of an augment, augmented reality story of a journey of a female convict sent to Australia using aggregated data from the British Library and elsewhere. The narrative is non-fiction and developed through data derived from the British Library's newspaper archive and digitized East India office ships logs. There is an aim to provide even more contextual data using the digitized 19th century books. And there are links to other resources such as Trove, the Old Bailey Online and the Digital Panopticon to show how a narrative of a single life can be traced through a large number of data sets, data sets across thousands of miles. I think we have a short video of this one. Moment one, hi. This is a demo audio for moment one. Moment two, hi. This is a demo audio for moment two. Moment three, hi. This is a demo audio for moment three. Moment four, hi. This is a demo audio for moment four.
Okay, um, so um, without further ado, um, um, the runner-up is, and drum roll, Travel Literature, A Data-Oriented Journey Through the British Library's 18th and 19th Century Books by um, UCL. And I think I've got Sarah, who's going to come and collect the award for the students. Um, I'm just going to give you a very quick kind of overview of, of what the students did. Um, so it was, we probably had about five or six different student groups. So this is just one of the projects that they produced. Um, there was a, a couple of others that were really fantastic as well. So um, really, I'd just like to say thank you on behalf of all my students. Um, but this group did a particularly fantastic job. Um, so the, the module's called Information Through the Ages. It's an undergraduate module on the uh, UCL's Arts and Sciences BASC degree program. Um, it's an interdisciplinary elective. So this is a, an elective that all second years on this de degree program, they have a choice of about 10. So um, they can pick any of these 10 modules that have specifically been created with a kind of an interdisciplinary academic mindset um, <clears throat> underpinning them. Um, it's 15 credits, level 5, FHEQ, and part of what the project they did, it's one of the assessments, which is the group project working with the British Library's metadata. They also do an animated archival gift project, and they also write a, a kind of a more typical traditional academic essay on any of the topics that we talk about, data privacy, um, algorithmic bias, etc. Um, so the module ran for the first time last year, so that this was a kind of a, a guinea pig student group, so it was really great that they um, came up with such brilliant work. So we worked with the Microsoft Books Collection, that's the 65,000 different digitised 19th century books that the British Library has, um, and the student group, um, Chase MacDonald, Brandon Lim, Felix Bing and Ruby Harrop, I would have been delighted to have them with me here today. Uh, Chase was actually an American affiliate student, so he's back in the States, and all the other students are on study abroad. I know Felix is in Russia right now because he's one of my tutees, so they, they kind of wave hello across the ether, and we're really excited to learn that they've won the runner-up prize. Um, so what, what did they do with, the, with their data? So their aim was they wanted to, they had these 65,000 kind of um, records in a spreadsheet, um, and they decided to focus on travel, because um, they thought this might be a really interesting kind of subset of curated data um, for future researchers. Uh, in particular, they were thinking maybe literary scholars and historians and geographers, and then they wanted to add to the data set and make it a bit more rich and kind of interesting for those future researchers and giving them a bit of a kind of a leg up in extra elements of the data set. Um, so what, what they ended up doing was they used a, they wrote a Python script to detect what they determined as the travel-related terms. So they picked out terms like travel, trip, voyage, and expedition um, for the script to kind of search through these 65,000 records. Um, and they also used various packages in, in, in terms of Python, so, so vocabulary and uh, the Python library. Um, to make sure that they picked up all the different vari variations, travellers, and thinking about the different spellings as well, because uh, this data set um, has kind of lots of different titles, also in different languages. Um, they then cleaned the data, uh, so that included ch uh, changing any inconsistencies, so capitalizations for, for cities, um, removed superfluous sim symbols, and then in using Oprah Vine, which was the software that we trained them in on site here at the British Library, um, they also replaced and changed any of the other errors that they found and pulled out records that were clearly not part of the actual travel set but had titles that had kind of found it, them dropped in just by the automated script pulling them out. So there was a bit of kind of automation and also the kind of the human analog, human eye on these records as well. Um, so they did things like extracted the place names and put them into separate columns so that future researchers would be able to do to, to look up these elements individually. Um, they also kind of updated them so that they created a present day um, nomenclature so that um, cities that had been previously known as a different uh, name, they updated and, and you know, maintained the historical name but also updated it to the present day version so uh, researchers could find things if they weren't aware that that had changed. Um, and yeah, here's just some kind of the research insights, so some of the data visualizations that they um, produced um, from their data set. So this is the, you can see these are the, uh, the kind of the top 10 cities that were featured in the 3,000 uh, titles that they found were travel related, um, also the continents and the kind of the top reference locations across all the different titles. So some interesting kind of numbers, some kind of interesting quantitative results uh, for future researchers that might help these future researchers lead them onto new avenues that they were kind of unaware that were interesting to kind of focus on in this data set. Um, and then this was just a 
uh, a little animated GIF of some of those data sets. So this is the number of mentions in book titles. Um, you can see the date changing, so that's as it moves through time towards us. Um, so again, this might be relevant for future researchers thinking about you know, what points in history are particular uh, countries or cities or places referenced, and is there something that, you know, connecting about why Egypt you know, gets four or five hits at this point in time in history. So lots of questions that the data actually pushed forward that could be, um, our students thought, very relevant for future researchers further down the line um, to investigate. Um, so that's a very quick pressy of, of the student work. Um, and you know, thank you very much to the British Library for um, allowing us to use their data set and encouraging us, in fact, to use the data set and work with us and our student groups. And we're very happy that this module is running uh, right now, right here again. Um, so we will be looking to have more student um, work that will come out of this and uh, more projects in terms of data sets that we can put back into the British Library for future researchers to actually use. Um, so thank you very much again. Okay, and now on to the winner. And the winner is the other voice, the postgraduate elective at the Royal College of Art. And I believe that um, Karitha, 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 sorry, Karitha, Kartika, sorry, Kartika, uh, Satch, um, sorry, my eyesight is really bad. Uh, Sacktavel. Um, is going to be coming up to collect the award um, together with Mary Stewart, who's going to give a quick overview of the project. If you'd like to come up. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm not um, one of the people on this uh, slide here. Um, I'm going to talk on behalf of Eleanor Dare and Matt Lewis, who are both unable to come today, but do also say hello and thank you very, very much for this award. I'll give a brief overview of the elective and how we work together, and then I'll pass over to Kartika, who will give you an idea of the kind of works that she and her fellow stu students created. So the purpose of this elective, and again, just like the last entry we heard, is the first time we've won run this elective here at the library and in partnership with the um, Royal College of Art, um, was to try and get some new ears to British Library oral history material and new creative insights um, into the very long life story interviews that we hold. I selected 11 very chunky bits of oral history and the students were let loose to do what they wanted with them creatively. Um, and um, we held a two-day showcase here at the British Library. We had about 125 British Library staff members come and see it, which was amazing. People who often didn't come to um, perhaps artworks before. And here is a few of the comments that came on our comments board. Um, so really exciting, deep engagement. People often stayed for about half an hour looking at the works, which was very exciting. Um, the students did some fantastic um, learning um, using this material. They greatly enhanced their technical skills through Matt and Eleanor's um, tuition um, in recording soundscapes, using visual media, holographic construction, virtual reality, um, installation design and acoustic environments. We also thought a lot together about the ethics of using someone's personal life story interview and the very detailed things that they're giving us and sharing with us about their lives. So that was a really interesting discussions and comments that went throughout the seminars and then were brought out in the pieces. Um, and finally, we were asking our, the students, and I think they definitely rose to the challenge, to think through sound, that sound was the, an amazing medium, an amazing digital medium and part of the British Library's collection to forefront and use that with deep listening, field recording and ethnographic research to create some fantastic works, which Kartika will now tell you all about. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, I, there were six pieces in total, so I'd like to briefly introduce them to you. Um, so we have, this is the one that I personally worked on, it was called Memory Foam, and it was um, a sonic quilt that was uh, in response to Irene Elliott's interview where she talks about her mother with much fondness and warmth, and I wanted to create something that when you touch the various patches within this um, fabric, it would trigger different audio pieces. Um, and then we've got Julia, she, who also responded to the same audio piece, and she created an intimate um, listening space where you could listen to Irene's voice through two telephones. James and David were inspired greatly by one of the pieces and they went on to Cornwall and 
recorded their own pieces, um, oral history collection interviews over there, and then they made these listening pots. So you could kind of hold them against your ear and listen to these sounds. Um, we have Raf, who uh, created a hologram in response to the an interview with one of the first people in the UK to be diagnosed with HIV. And it was um, responsive to, to the audio, and it would kind of move. We had Alexia, who, created, who recreated the front room of um, Donald Palmer in one of his interviews, and it had in virtual reality. And you had different piece, objects in this space that you could trigger and listen to the audio um, clips. And then Kingsley created a short film that was exploring sexuality and identity, again, stemming from one of the interviews. Um, it was a great experience. Thank you so much to the British Library for this. Thank you.